New York Governor Andrew Cuomo's top aide, Melissa DeRosa, has resigned as he faces the possibility of impeachment. At the same time, one of his accusers has come forward to speak out publicly about what she experienced while working for him as an aide. Now, this follows the state attorney general report that found that Cuomo had sexually harassed 11 women, and he could be facing criminal charges as a result. Now, um, Melissa DeRosa, that's the top aide for Cuomo, uh, announced in a statement that she's stepping down. And she said, personally, the last two years have been emotionally and mentally trying. I am forever grateful for the opportunity to have worked with such talented and committed colleagues on behalf of our state. Now, uh, she has been embroiled in this controversy herself uh, because she has been accused of helping to foster the type of environment that allowed for Cuomo to sexually harass uh, his aides. The 38 year old who held the highest ranking appointed position in the state appeared throughout the New York State Attorney General Letitia James August 3rd report. The report detailed DeRosa's role in seeking to discredit one of Cuomo's accusers, Lindsay Boylan, by leaking personal records and taking part in an effort to write and release a letter questioning her character. The document was never made public. And of course, this is not the first time that both Cuomo and his top aide DeRosa have been embroiled in controversy. In February, DeRosa came under scrutiny for her role in the administration's underreporting of COVID-19 deaths in nursing homes last year. A different report from James's office released in January found that New York had actually underreported COVID-19 deaths among residents of nursing homes by approximately 50%. And remember, Cuomo was the one who forced nursing homes to take in elderly patients who had tested positive for COVID and hadn't fully recovered yet. And that's how COVID spread in nursing homes in the state of New York. Now, before we go to some video featuring one of Cuomo's aides who has accused him of sexual assault and harassment. Cenk, I wanted to get your thoughts on DeRosa's decision to step down. Yeah, she's trying to avoid accountability and she's running for the hills, super obvious. Um, and hey, uh, don't aid and abet uh, bad guys at work because uh, you think it'll help your interests. So. I, you know, we all the only details we know are the ones that are public. The ones that are public don't look good. It looked like she was helping to, you know, try to question the credibility of people who had been sexually harassed. Um, that is not a very good thing to do. Although some of the alt left probably are applauding her now. Uh, I mean, they engage a, in yeah. it. Yeah. That's certainly true, yeah. right? Go after someone who accuses sexual harassment. Go after them by trying to. Uh, uh, Question their credibility and smear them. Yeah, yeah. so I, you know, maybe they're celebrating Cuomo in those circles, but of course, those are not real progressives. So, right uh, now, back to this. Um, I think the details of the assistant are beyond damning. Mm -hmm. It's her testimony alone, let alone the fact that it's backed up by ten other women who have similar allegations and uh, all corroborated at the time by other folks. It's over, man. It's way beyond over. Listen to what she has to say, and then we're done with this. Yeah, so this is Brittany Camiso. She spoke to CBS this morning about what she experienced when she was working as one of the aides for Cuomo. Let's watch. While I was upstairs in the office, the governor said, why don't we take a selfie? So his suggestion, you yes. say? Yes. With I, your phone? With my phone. I then felt while taking the selfie, his hand go down my back onto my butt and he started rubbing it. Not sliding it, not, you know, quickly brushing over it, rubbing my butt. And did you ask him, what are you doing? Well, this was while I was taking the selfie. I became so nervous that my hands were clearly shaking and a lot of the photos that I was snapping were completely blurry. I showed him them and he said, "Oh, you know, those aren't, you know, those aren't good." And he said, "Why don't we go sit on the couch and we can take a better one?" So you sat on the couch. Um, I sat on the couch because I thought to myself, "Okay, I don't think on the couch that he would have a way to just do what he just did." So I felt safer actually on the couch. And in the photo, you know, I have my arm wrapped around his shoulder, mm -hmm. you know, almost as if, you know, we were taking a picture with a buddy. 
So uh, she also talks about you know him. You know she, she's clearly stating that he had groped her on multiple occasions. By the way, we have more video to get to in just a second, but um, that's pretty damning. And also, I, I just want to point out that as this is happening. You know, they take the selfie because he insists on taking the selfie. And you look at that image and it seems like everything is totally fine. It seems like everything is great as if she wasn't being literally assaulted as that photo was being taken, right? So I point that out because not all is what it seems, right? Like sometimes the optics of something lead you in the wrong direction in terms of like knowing what's really going on. But when you're talking about an imbalance of power, when you're talking about literally the governor of New York, um, a woman like Camiso finds herself in a situation where she's got to play along to get along, right? Because there's, there's a lot at, at stake if you speak out, there's a lot at stake if you, um, Slap Cuomo's hand away as he's groping you like that. Yeah, and I don't, I don't think that's the right way of phrasing it. She's not going along to get along. She's, she's nervous. She's scared. Right, of course. And that's so what she, I meant. yeah, and so she's, and she, guys, it's not just about getting fired. There, there's gaslighting. Like, oh, this is normal. What are you complaining about? This is like you're being weird. Like, oh my god, because what you, it's hard to understand, but it comes across when you read the report. Uh, that everybody in the office has such reverence for Cuomo. And in America, and this is probably true in a lot of countries, there's such reverence overall for politicians that they're put on a pedestal, usually by the media, right? They're these all powerful entities, especially Cuomo in New York. Oh my God, nobody could question Cuomo. I mean, people, I were, mean, calling, the, people were calling Cuomo supporters or people were like loving on Cuomo so hard during the beginning of the pandemic because the juxtaposition of Cuomo to, to Trump was so severe, right? And so people were like referring to themselves as Cuomo sexuals. So imagine being a woman who works for him, who's being sexually assaulted by him. Feeling like you can't speak out because if you do, I mean, the entire country is like in in the middle of a love affair with Cuomo, right? Well, the, at least the mainstream media was, right. right? And yes, the juxtaposition was real. Cuomo would sound rational and Trump would sound unhinged. And when right. you watch them back to back, you're like, Jesus. And I get it, it was a super low bar. You just had to sound a little bit more rational than a person who should literally be locked up in an insane asylum, right? Oh, why don't we inject bleach and find out what happens? Cuomo would come out and go, "Oh, maybe we should listen to scientists." Everyone's like, "Yes, right? right." And so now, having said that, but the love affair that the mainstream media had with Cuomo was decades. It started way before COVID. Cuomo could do no wrong. Cynthia Nixon challenges him. Any other progressive challenges him. As Zephyr Teach out does, they're like, "How dare they? These these challengers have no credibility. I don't know why they're bothering to do a primary of a good Democrat like Andrew Cuomo." That was the press. It wasn't other Democrats. The press is the worst. They aided and abetted Cuomo his entire career. He would have never had the kind of power that he had if it wasn't for the press constantly kissing kissing his ass. Okay, now fast forward to that moment in the office and the press gaslit you, everybody in that office gaslit you and and you thinking, well this guy's untouchable and they say he's like the greatest thing since sliced bread and now I'm going to go and tell everybody that they're all wrong and I'm right, that it's not right for him to do that to me. The pressure is unbelievable. That's why you don't just immediately, some people don't immediately report it. And that's not because oh, they had a secret sinister plan to blackmail them later. Cuz you know how women are, right? No, it's because they were nervous. They were nervous because of the situation and the culture at hand. Now it got worse with her. I, I, we gotta go to the other clip so you understand what kind of, of a monster Cuomo is. He gets up and he goes to give me a hug. And I could tell immediately when he hugged me, it was in a probably the most sexually aggressive manner than any of the other hugs that he had given me. Um, it was then that I said, you know, uh, Governor, you know, my words were, you're going to get us in trouble. And I thought to myself, that probably wasn't the best thing to say, but at that time I was so afraid that one of the mansion staff that they were going to come up and see this and think, oh, you know, is that what she comes here for? 
And that's not what I came there for, and that's not who I am. And I was terrified of that. And when I said that, he walked over, shut the door, so hard to the point where I thought, for sure, someone downstairs must think, they must think if they heard that, what is going on, came back to me, and that's when he put his hand up my blouse and cupped my breast over my bra. I exactly remember looking down, seeing his hand, which is a large hand, thinking to myself, oh my God, this is happening. It happened so quick. He didn't say anything. When I stopped it, he just pulled away and walked away. You know, what's so sick about all of this, and I see it over and over again in any story involving sexual misconduct in a workplace. The victim, in this case, you know, who we're hearing from right now, Brittany Camiso, even now in retelling the story, she's second guessing her own behavior as it like, like, we live in a culture that assigns blame to the woman who's being preyed upon. And you see it over and over again. Like maybe that wasn't the right thing to say. Maybe I should have done this. I don't want anyone to think this or that about me. No, she's not the bad guy. But as most women in similar situations find, society treats them like they did something to deserve it. Yeah, and the reason she's stating all of it that way is because she's not wrong that some percentage of the country will look at that and go. A huge percentage, we'll huge look, percentage. We'll look at that and say she wanted it, it was her fault, she let him on, guaranteed, a significant percentage. So she then has that cloud hanging over her for the rest of her life. And by the way, we're reliving her harassment over and over again, millions of times. and. And, and that's what people are gonna remember about her. And that sucks. So meanwhile, the New York State Assembly has started impeachment proceedings. Andrew Cuomo's arrogance knows no bounds. This is not a lone story, there's no he said, she said, there's he said, and they all said, right? This is not remotely close, your own, uh, by the way, these Democrats in New York were so subservient to Andrew Cuomo. Now they're all walking around like they're tough guys. Almost all of them would do anything that he ordered them to do. And even when they have turned on you because your actions are so monstrous and unacceptable, when are you gonna get the clue that maybe you should step aside? And by the way, Don Lemon on CNN is saying he should step aside because he's ruining the Cuomo name. Uh. Oh, I didn't know it was that important. <laughs> Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun, but you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.